The next to last talk comes from uh, uh, someone that worked with Keith in 1983, who also uh, comes from, also co-author worked with Keith several years earlier, Mario Giacchino. Giuseppe Friero will be the speaker, and it'll be on TPR and XPS studies of cobalt copper mixed oxide catalysis, the evidence of a strong copper cobalt interaction. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, first of all, I wanted to thank uh, the organizer for inviting me to this uh, uh, special symposium and uh, uh, this uh, in honor of the Professor Tithol. This uh, meeting certainly represents a great uh, occasion to demonstrate uh, my personal and deep gratitude to Keith for that work for Mariano Giacomo uh, uh, for uh, the uh, possibility to have had to uh, spend a very critical period in Keith laboratory. So <coughs> this uh, <coughs> today <coughs> I will uh, uh, I will show you uh, the results of uh, a TPR and XPS uh, study of uh, uh, cobalt copper and its oxide catalyst uh, and an evidence of a strong cobalt copper interaction will be provided. Uh, the uh, cobalt uh, uh, copper uh, catalysts uh, are of interest because they are active for the oxidation of carbon monoxide in, uh, by oxygen and also for the conversion of synthesis gas uh, to higher particles. So, moreover, cobalt based catalysts uh, were also proved to be uh, uh, active catalysts for the synthesis of uh, hydrocarbons. Uh, the, uh, well, uh, we have prepared the uh, uh, cobalt uh, uh, copper catalyst uh, in a wide range of composition by co precipitation of the constant pH. Uh, we added the cobalt uh, and the copper nitrates uh, in a solution of uh, in a nitrogen, uh, sodium, and hydrogen carbonate solution. And uh, the co-precipitation of constant pH is one of the most useful methods uh, for obtaining the homogeneous precursors. Uh, namely, the uh, catalyst uh, metal components uh, are present, uh, should be present in the same crystalline structure. And uh, this is uh, very important in order to obtain uh, up in the composition uh, the uh, well dispersed uh, and uh, mixed of sites uh, in intimate contact uh, to each other. The um, catalyst where uh, uh, the precursors were finally uh, decomposed both in, a, uh, in an inner atmosphere and uh, uh, in a dry air at 723 K for 24 hours. The, both the precursors and uh, the uh, final uh, uh, catalyst uh, were characterized by several techniques as uh, X-ray diffraction analysis, diffuser frequency spectroscopy, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, and temperature program reduction. However, today I will give to you some uh, details uh, about uh, the surface properties uh, uh, of the cobalt and copper uh, mix of oxide catalyst uh, and uh, of uh, their uh, uh, reduction behavior in a nitrogen. However, I wish to, I want to show briefly the uh, uh, X-ray diffraction analysis results uh, for the precursors. Well, uh, when uh, for the uh, specimen containing the only uh, cobalt, namely for uh, the cobalt copper 100 atomic ratio composition, the pure cobalt carbonate, ferrocobaltite, was obtained. On the opposite side, for the uh, compound containing the only copper, namely for the cobalt copper 100 100 composition, the pure malachite, the hydroxy the copper hydroxy carbonate, was obtained. Uh, both the malachite and the sphericobaltite are natural minerals, in particular, the malachite is a beautiful green uh, mineral. Uh, well, in the um, uh, for uh, the uh, co um, cobalt copper composition 85 15, namely when just the first uh, amount of copper was added, uh, the X ray diffraction analysis showed that the copper uh, formed a solid solution in the sphericobaltite lattice. On the other hand, when uh, for the, uh, in the range 
of a composition 892 and the 3367, the uh, cobalt, the X-ray recognizes showed that the cobalt was present in the crystalline lattice of the malachite. So also in this case we obtained the solid solution. So the first our aim was obtained, just we had the uh, in, uh, catalyst metal components in the uh, same crystalline lattice. So we obtained at the end of the preparation homogeneous supercapsules. Well, about the composition uh, of uh, this uh, homogeneous precursors, uh, we uh, uh, obtained the, uh, several uh, cobalt copper mixed oxide uh, uh, depending on the uh, treatment atmosphere and on the cobalt copper atomic ratios. So, <coughs> in the, this uh, table, the path characterization of X ray diffraction analysis uh, are uh, reported uh, together with the TPR results, uh, which will be discussed uh, later on. So, if we, we look at the uh, uh, nitrogen calcite catalyst, uh, we can see that the pure sphere of cobalt uh, formed under an inert atmosphere the cobalt 2 plus oxide, COO, which is uh, expected to be the stable phase under of a cobalt oxide under an, inner, uh, under an inert atmosphere. The first addition of a copper uh, formed beside the cobalt of two plus oxide, the CO-CO2 phase, which uh, as the XPS results uh, will have proved, uh, was formed by copper 1 plus and cobalt 3 plus uh, uh, species. Uh, as uh, the copper content uh, was uh, further increased, the amount of, of the CO2 CO phase uh, increased and became the main component at a cobalt copper ratio equal to 1. When the cobalt copper ratio was uh, higher than 1, the uh, uh, Copper oxide was formed together, of, uh, together uh, with the uh, CO2 phase. As uh, the copper content was uh, further increased, um, the amount of copper oxide in the catalyst increased at the expense of the uh, CO2 phase and uh, became <coughs> the major component for the 1892 uh, composition. Well, the X-ray, uh, the results of the X-ray diffraction analysis for the air and catalyst showed a completely different picture. So, the pure sphere, when the pure sphere of cobaltite was uh, decomposed in dry air, the spinel CO3O4 was formed, and also in this case, uh, this is expected because the CO3O4 is the most stable cobalt oxide under oxidizing atmosphere. When, uh, if for the, when if for the air calcite catalyst, the first addition of copper was made, copper oxide was formed uh, together with the CO3O4 phase. Uh, by increasing the copper loading in the catalyst, the copper oxide amount uh, increased and, uh, of course, became the uh, major component for the, the most diluted in cobalt catalyst. Uh, we also observed, uh, the excellent reflection analysis also showed that, uh, and specifically for the 50-50 composition, that uh, a solid solution of copper in the spinel lattice was formed, uh, namely copper replaced the copper 2 plus and replaced the cobalt 2 plus ions in the triethral sides of the spinel. Well, the, uh, the composition of the pure malachite led to the formation, of course, of a pure copper oxide. Well, we, therefore, we started with homogeneous materials, and, uh, uh, which uh, homogeneous precursors, and after the composition, of several uh, cobalt copper oxides were formed. Well, now, uh, according to our previous experience with the copper zinc and also copper chromium systems, uh, when these homogeneous uh, precursors were decomposed, they formed the mixed oxides, weren't dispersed and in intimate contact to each other. Uh, so, uh, and in that case, we proved that uh, some interactions occurred 
between different obsolete phases. So <coughs> also in this case, we, uh, our aim was uh, both to evaluate the reduction of behavior uh, of uh, uh, this kind of, of catalyst, but also to check uh, the presence of a synergistic effect between the, uh, the oxidic uh, phases in the mixed oxide catalyst. And in order to do this, we have carried out a TPR investigation uh, by using uh, uh, the TPR measurements were made by using a dilute stream of uh, uh, hydrogen and nitrogen, and especially the <coughs> in order to obtain optimum reduction profiles, the uh, 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 experimental uh, operating variables were fixed at by setting adequate values of the K and P parameters, which were introduced in the literature, respectively by Monti and Baker, and by Mallet e Caballero. Uh, this is important because we proved that if the TPR measurements are carried out under inadequate experimental conditions, artifacts uh, can affect the reduction profiles uh, and the reliability of the TPR measurements is completely lost. So this, uh, uh, the following transparency, I will show you the uh, TPR results for the nitrogen calcined uh, catalysts. Uh, the uh, uh, reduction profile of the uh, pure uh, cobalt to plus oxide is characterized by a uh, main peak uh, located at 623K and uh, uh, this uh, single peak uh, uh, mm, mm, indicates that a single reduction process uh, took place uh, and at the end we observed the, the formation of uh, cobalt metal. But uh, when uh, uh, the first addition of copper uh, produced a dramatic change in the reduction profile, so you look at the uh, catalyst having a composition of cobalt copper atomic ratio 85 15, we, uh, the reduction profile of this catalyst was characterized by at least two peaks. The first one, uh, the, both of these peaks are uh, shifted remarkably towards lower temperature. As the copper content was further increased, the uh, further shift towards lower temperature and the narrowing of the reduction profiles were, uh, were observed. And uh, uh, therefore, the TPR results suggest that uh, a strong, uh, that when the copper, the presence of a copper remarkably uh, promotes the reduction of the cobalt copper mix of the catalyst and uh, uh, the uh, uh, presence of course of single reduction uh, peaks uh, for the catalyst having at least two phases means that the promotion effect is so large that we had only one reduction process instead of expected at least of two. Uh, well, the situation for uh, the air-carcinic uh, catalyst, uh, the TPR results of uh, the air-carcinic catalyst uh, um, are reported in this transparency. Uh, the uh, uh, reduction profile of the pure CO2O4 is uh, characterized by uh, as it promotes the shoulder at lower temperature and by a main peak uh, located at about 600 K. So as reported in literature, the uh, uh, TPR uh, suggests that the reduction of the CO2 O4 occurs in a double step, um, namely the uh, pronounced uh, shoulder corresponds to the reduction of the cobalt plus in the octahedral sites of the spinellar to cobalt plus, whereas the main peak corresponds to the uh, uh, reduction of the COO formed by collapsing of the original uh, spinel to cobalt metal. Well, also in this case, when uh, the initial amount of, of copper was added, the dramatic change of the production profiles occurred. So for this specimen 8515, uh, for the catalyst 8515, formed by CO3O4 in the copper oxide, the reduction profile is characterized by two well-defined peaks. 
one at the lower temperature and the other one at the higher temperature. However, the reduction profile of this catalyst as a whole is shifted towards lower temperature if compared to the CO2 for phase. Well, these two peaks uh, uh, are changing in size depending on uh, the cobalt, on the uh, copper, on the cobalt copper content. Namely, the uh, feature, the peak at the lower temperature increases in size, uh, in size as uh, the copper uh, content increases, and whereas the um, uh, low, higher temperature peak decreases in size. Uh, in size uh, as the cobalt content decreases. So this trend suggests that the lower temperature peak is related to the reduction of the copper oxide phase, whereas the higher temperature peak is related to the reduction of the CO2 and 4. And also this is in agreement with the thermodynamics because the CO2 and 4 is a much more stable oxide if compared to copper oxide. And the reduction profile of copper oxide is also here reported uh, for the sake of a comparison. Uh, well, also for the Ergasan catalyst, uh, the TPR results uh, proved that, that the presence of copper remarkably promoted the reduction of cobalt, uh, of the cobalt copper mixed oxide catalyst uh, compared to both the CO3 or 4 oxide and uh, the pure copper oxide. Well, now I will, uh, uh, in order to uh, I mean, just uh, uh, so with the cobalt copper system, we have uh, 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 found uh, the salts which were previously uh, uh, found for uh, the copper zinc and for the copper uh, chromium system. So uh, the uh, uh, copper precipitation and constant pH uh, lead to homogeneous precursors and the decomposition of junior precursors create an intimate contact between the oxidative spaces which are strongly interacting uh, which, uh, to each other. So in, in order to make stronger this uh, our uh, idea, uh, we uh, carry out uh, TPR measurements on mechanical mixtures of a pure copper oxide and the CO3 or 4 on copper oxide. Uh, CO3 or 4 oxide, sorry. And the results, uh, the TPR result, uh, the TPR measurements on a mechanical mixture having a, a cobalt copper composition almost uh, uh, fairly equal to 50 50 is uh, reported in uh, this uh, transparency. As you can see, the reduction profile of the mechanical uh, mixture almost resembles that of the pure copper oxide and the CO2 4. So this is uh, another, uh, I mean, uh, a strong proof that uh, the, uh, in the copper mix of oxide catalyst, uh, the interaction is related to the preparation method and uh, to the uh, decomposition of the homogeneous catalysts. Well, uh, now I will tell you some XPS results of uh, the uh, uh, of this uh, uh, kind of uh, catalyst, and in this uh, transparency, uh, the uh, cobalt, the XPS cobalt spectra are are shown, uh, and uh, the uh, cobalt to pre three half uh, uh, transition uh, 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 is characterized by a main peak and uh, a satellite peak at the higher banding energy. For the uh, specimen, uh, this is for uh, this is uh, sorry. I will show you. <coughs> I will discuss uh, the the nitrogen first. The nitrogen calcium catalyst and uh, both uh, the uh, value of the banding energy of uh, the main peak for the uh, catalyst made by um, pure cobalt plus uh, oxide and uh, the uh, this I mean, the energy separation of the spin orbit splitting namely the uh, uh, energy separation between the cobalt to be one half and the cobalt to be three half uh, transition are in agreement uh, with the spectral assignments made in literature for a pure uh, powder uh, uh, of uh, uh, cobalt to plus oxide. So when copper is uh, uh, added in the catalyst, what is observed uh, is a decrease of uh, the intensity of the satellite peak and a slight shift of the bending energy of the main peak. 
So this both feature suggesting that the deformation of a CO3 or 4 species uh, occurred. In fact, uh, it's uh, well known in literature and this is an anomaly in the XPS that uh, the, uh, there is an inverse shift of the cobalt 2 plus and the cobalt 3 plus binding energy. Namely, the binding energy of a cobalt 2 plus is lower than the binding energy of a cobalt 2 plus. And uh, moreover, uh, in uh, cobalt 2 plus, uh, plus containing compounds, the uh, uh, satellite peak is uh, virtually absent. Well, and uh, the uh, results of uh, the XPS results are uh, uh, um, uh, nicely an agreement for the surface of what we have found for the bulk, because uh, I'll call you that for the uh, <coughs> Uh, for the uh, 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 when copper was added, the CO CO2 phase was formed, uh, which uh, and the XPS clearly showed that the uh, CO the, uh, the CO2 CO2 phase the cobalt was uh, present as a cobalt three plus uh, ions. With agreement with the spectral assignment made the literature for pure CO3 for uh, powder. Uh, or powder. Uh, well, also for uh, uh, the airbus and the catalyst, uh, the cobalt uh, spectra, XPS spectra, uh, were modified uh, when copper is added. And in particular, also in this case, uh, when copper was uh, uh, added to the catalyst, a decrease of the satellite peak and a slight shift of the dependent energy of the main peak uh, were observed. Uh, <coughs> Uh, as uh, 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 before, this, uh, 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 both of these findings uh, suggest also in this case that uh, there is uh, an increase uh, of the relative uh, cobalt 2 plus ion concentration. I recall you that uh, for this kind of catalyst, uh, we observed the deformation of CO3 or 4 spinel, solid solution of CU, CO3 or 4, namely copper was in solid solution with spinel lattice and the copper oxide. So, uh, uh, the decrease of the satellite peak, which indicates an increase of uh, relative concentration of, of copper plus ions, uh, suggests that uh, at the surface of this catalyst, uh, there is uh, the uh, uh, formation of the solid solution of a copper inside the spinel lattice. Because, as you know, the relative cobalt 3 plus concentration increases as copper is replacing the cobalt 2 plus ions in the spinel lattice. So, the cobalt amount, the relative amount of cobalt 2 plus ions decreases if compared in the spinel to the uh, original amount of the cobalt 3 plus ions. Well, uh, uh, now I will show you the results of. Uh, the XPS results for copper, this is, uh, uh, these are the XPS, uh, co the copper XPS spectra for the nitrogen calcium catalyst. And uh, I recall you that uh, the, uh, for copper to plus compounds, the copper to P3 transition is uh, characterized by a main peak and uh, by a, main, a, main, a satellite peak at a higher landing energy. And also the copper plus one uh, uh, compounds uh, doesn't have uh, a satellite peak. So it's easy, rather easy to check uh, the presence of a copper 2 plus uh, ions uh, and a copper 1 plus ions uh, in the XPS spectra. In the, uh, so the, we, uh, 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 the XPS spectra of the cobalt uh, copper mix of the side catalyst uh, were characterized by an asymmetric main peak this figure in the existence of two components, uh, one related to copper to plus ions and the other one related to the copper uh, uh, one plus ions. In fact, if you look at the bending energy of the main peak of uh, the uh, catalyst having a cobalt copper composition 8515, this bending energy is much close to the copper one plus species and also the satellite peak is uh, not uh, uh, intense as uh, for the pure copper oxide. And I will show later uh, the, uh, mm, this uh, particular aspect. Well, uh, when copper, uh, uh, now when uh, uh, the amount of copper increased, we observed that the main peak became more 
asymmetric for the third degrees, it's the same in the composition. And then also we have the, the still a, a, a component for the uh, other catalyst. So for XPS also confirmed that, that the surface of the nitrogen side catalyst, uh, we have the, the presence of a both a copper one plus and a copper two plus species. The situation is uh, much easier for the, for the copper to be three alpha transition uh, uh, for the alpha sunny catalyst and uh, as you can see there is a little uh, intense a satellite peak and the main peak in this case was uh, uh, mainly fairly symmetric this is suggesting that uh, for the alpha sunny catalyst uh, mainly copper to plus species uh, are present and this is in agreement also with the bulk results so just a removal to the conclusions of this work so, uh, uh, several copper, cobalt copper mix oxide were prepared by using a co-precipitation uh, pH and obtaining uh, uh, and uh, uh, homogeneous of the castles were obtained in the overall range of a composition. The, uh, for the uh, uh, catalyst that are signed, uh, for the uh, air calcium catalyst, the formation of the spinal phase, CO3O4, or a solid solution of a copper inside the CO3O4 spinal lattice was found together with the pure copper oxide. The XPS was, uh, was the XPS results were in agreement with the bulk results, namely, they showed that at the surface of the materials, both cobalt plus, cobalt plus, and the cobalt plus species were present. One of the most relevant results of that, uh, was that the TPR uh, revealed that uh, in uh, the uh, presence of copper dramatically promotes the reduction of the cobalt copper mix on the side. Is uh, coincides if compared to the pure uh, uh, CO3O4 and uh, CO uh, oxides. Uh, similar results were found uh, for the nitrogen calcine catalyst. However, in this case, the uh, 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 oxides uh, uh, formed were mainly CO or cobalt plus oxide and the phase CuCO2, and uh, also. In this catalyst, the pure copper oxide was uh, detected, the amount of a chill phase depending on the, the cobalt copper atomic ratios. Uh, the XBS analysis for the nitrogen oxide catalyst revealed uh, the presence of uh, uh, copper 2 plus, uh, copper 1 plus, uh, cobalt 2 plus, and the copper 3 plus species in agreement uh, also with the bulk results. And uh, also in this case, uh, TPR was able to uh, prove that uh, uh, the uh, strong interaction occurred in, the, in this kind of a catalyst. And the, the synergistic effect found for both air and nitrogen calcine catalyst was originated by the intimate contact and by the good interpretation of the different oxides as obtained by homogeneous supercastles. So let, please let me finish by asking you if you know what is the main occupation of a kiss at the Gordon Conference. If you go with your mind to the very long and bright career of a kiss, the answer is easy and it is important in this transparency. So this at the Gordon Conference is a book for the active sites and you can see the specific tools used by Keith in order to do this, this magnifying glass in order to see as accurately as possible the surface of the catalyst and also the butterfly net which is used by Keith to catch postdoctoral students. So I want to thank Keith. Yeah.
in your physical mixture of the oxides yeah. after you've gone through the temperature program and reduction. Sure. Did you reoxidize it and do it again to see if there were any changes? Yeah, yeah. We were we, marking we just, we just, uh, we observed the uh, not really a remarkable change. So just a reduction by a change a little bit. But uh, the main results which, uh, which we obtained by repeating the experiments are uh, that uh, anyway you obtained uh, as uh, I would say the original mechanical mixture. So just uh, the, probably because the temperature was not nice enough in order to make the interaction between the color, between the two components. Anyway, the, uh, because uh, we used uh, a relatively high calcination temperature, 723, and uh, we stopped uh, the TPR uh, runs uh, before this temperature. Anyway, we didn't have, we never had same strong interaction as occurred in the uh, final uh, catalysts. Okay.